periodontal pocket. A female patient, Clara, aged 40 years, came to my clinic with painful and itchy gums. She described the pain as dull and appearing as if it's from the bone. Pain appears after taking food. She told me about her urge to dig the area using a toothpick and feels relieved once the gums bleed. On intraoral examination, I noticed plaque and calculus deposits, halitosis, a generalized bluish-red hue on the marginal and attached gingiva, and spacing in between her front teeth. I asked her about the gaps. She told me that she had well-aligned teeth which later shifted and created the gaps. I started probing on all the teeth and noted there were generalized deep pockets with depths ranging from 6 to 8 mm. The gingiva was bleeding on probing. Then I explained to her about the importance of oral hygiene and advised her to have a full mouth flap surgery. After analyzing the patient's radiograph which depicted generalized bone loss, I classified the case as generalized periodontitis. Let me throw some light on the periodontal pocket. We have a space between our teeth and the marginal gingiva called the gingival sulcus. Its depth ranges from 2 to 3 mm. Imagine pocket billiards with six openings. Consider the openings as the gingival sulcus and the pool balls as the bacteria. Over time, the depth of the openings increases due to constant hitting from the pool balls. This leads to further accommodation of pool balls, that is the bacteria, which continue to increase the depth further. Similarly, the deepening of the sulcus due to a disease process is called a periodontal pocket. The junctional epithelium migrates apically, thereby increasing the depth. To explain how the pocket forms, let me use a story of an elderly lady having difficulty potting a plant. As she placed the plant into the soil, she noticed the roots were not properly nestled. She asked her gardener to dig the soil deeper to accommodate the roots. This can be compared to the first mechanism of pocket formation, where the junctional epithelium migrates apically, creating sulcus depth. As there is a loss of attachment, it is called a true pocket. Now, if the elderly lady had asked a gardener to just add more soil instead of digging deeper, the roots would still be completely covered. This gives the appearance of increased pit depth, doesn't it? This can be compared to the second mechanism of pocket formation, where the gingiva overgrows, leading to increased depth without apical migration of junctional epithelium. Since there is no loss of attachment, it is called a false or pseudo or gingival pocket. The last method of pocket formation is where both the apical migration of junctional epithelium and coronal movement of gingiva is taking place, leading to increased depth. Apical migration of living junctional epithelial cells along the root surface is required for pocket formation. The necrosis of junctional epithelium and necrotizing periodontitis creates an ulcer that prevents epithelial migration and a pocket cannot form. Moving on to the classification of pocket. The first classification is based on the location of the bottom of the pocket in relation to the underlying bone. It can be a suprabony or an infrabony pocket. In the suprabony pocket, the bottom of the pocket is above the level of the alveolar bone. It is also called supracrestal or supraalveolar pocket. Pop quiz. In the infrabony pocket, the bottom of the pocket is below the level of the alveolar bone. It is also called intrabony or intraalveolar or subcrestal pocket. Pop quiz.
The second classification is based on the number of surfaces involved. It can be a simple, compound, or a spiral pocket. In simple type, pocket is present only on a single tooth surface. In a compound type, pocket is present on two or more surfaces. Imagine placing your hand into your jeans pocket. Your hand directly reaches the base of the pocket, isn't it? Similarly, when a probe is placed, the base of the pocket is in direct communication with the gingival margin. The third type of pocket is the spiral type. It is also called the complex type. Imagine searching for something important in your messy bag. Doesn't your hand start in one direction and move to different areas in the bag? This type of pocket also starts on one tooth surface and then twists around the tooth to involve one or more surfaces. It is more commonly seen in the furcation areas. Tracing back to my case, my patient had localized pain or pressure, especially after eating. Dull, radiating pain deep in the bone, itchy gums, and the urge to dig with pointed instrument. Other than these, we can see symptoms like foul taste in the pocket areas, tendency to suck the interdental regions, sensitivity to hot and cold, and tooth pain in the absence of caries. There is an English proverb that says, face is the index of the mind. If a person is angry, it is immediately expressed on his face. The clinical signs that we observe in a patient are also a reflection of histopathologic changes. The bluish red discoloration of the gingiva is due to the circulatory stagnation. The flaccidity is due to the destruction of gingival fibers. The smooth, shiny surface is due to the epithelial atrophy and edema. Pitting on pressure is due to edema and degeneration. Bleeding on probing is due to increased vascularity, thinning and degeneration of epithelium, and engorged blood vessels near to the inner surface. Inner aspect of the pocket is painful due to the ulceration. Pus may be expressed on digital pressure due to separative inflammation. Sometimes the gingiva appears healthy externally, but degenerative changes continue on the inner aspect. This type of pocket is called a fibrotic pocket. This is due to the domination of fibrotic changes over degenerative changes. Let's study the pathogenesis of pocket. Microbial pathogens cause the inflammation of gingiva. As the inflammation spreads, it causes breakdown of collagen in connective tissues. Due to collagen loss, the apical cells of junctional epithelium proliferate along the root by giving out finger-like projections. Then, PMNs invade the coronal end of junctional epithelium to defend this process. When the volume of PMNs reach to 60% or more, the coronal portion of junctional epithelium also detaches. This leads to an increase in probing depth called a periodontal pocket. Once the pocket is formed, the bacteria exploit the subgingival anaerobic environment to further multiply and increase the disease process. Though our body tries to attempt pocket repair, complete healing does not take place. This is due to constant bacterial attack that stimulates inflammatory response. It also destroys the newly formed tissue elements in the repair process. We will continue with histopathology, pocket detection, and treatment in our next video. Hope you had fun learning with us.